Okay, great. Well, thank you for being here, everybody. Um, we know many of you uh, recognize a lot of those faces. Um, Jessica Fox and myself um, have been, um, well, MAPS coaches for quite some time. Jessica, you've been a team leader for about 17 years. Um, and uh, collectively, we recruited um, over 5,000 agents. So recruiting is our passion, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So as always, we need to um, bring up the TCPA, right, that makes sure that anything that we talk about, anything that you're doing, um, that you are following the, the TCA uh, guidelines, CCPA guidelines. Um, as Miles had suggested or mentioned, um, we uh, also teach, besides being MAPS 101 coaches, we also teach Rockstar Recruiting, um, which is a, a course, uh, a 90-day course to really level up your recruiting uh, at a high level, a weekly uh, phone call with live interaction. We do pop-up classes as as extra bonus classes, or we do role playing and prospecting, um, and it's all included in this program. The next one's going to start after family reunion in March, so check that out if that's something that you're interested in, or if you have an assistant team leader or team, anybody that's helping you. It's a phenomenal course uh, at a very very reasonable price. Uh, Rockstar Recruiting has been one of the staple fast track programs for literally about 15 years with Maps. So check that out if that's something you're interested in. So today, um, let's just start, you know, with talking about the recruiting system. So, you yeah. know, a couple of things to think about is that all great recruiters, you know, have a system, right? When you look at, you know, all the great people we're going to see at Family Reunion on stage and, and many of you here on the call, you know, it, it's just their level of mastery and success comes to down to, you know, their level of mastery of the recruiting system, right? So, what are some of the key things to the recruiting system? Well, you got to you got to have a specific recruiting strategic plan, right? So think about this as we go through this real quickly, you know, rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. You know, how clear are you on it? Not having a one, three, five on for the market center, but on a specific strategic recruiting plan for you to get to your numbers, right? The numbers, the goals that you have for growth, you know, do you have a specific plan? Do you have a specific target list? And do you know what uh, the recruiting strategies for each of those are? Some of the stuff we're going to talk about today, like if you're going after megas or indies, you know, those are different strategies than going after new people, obviously. And, you know, are you are you clear on the gross to grow, right? That, that this, is, this is all about getting to race a relationship with people, grossing it up, you know, to, to win the net game, right? And, and it's all about setting appointments because if you can't, if you can't set appointments and get, you know, get in that bat with somebody, then you're probably not going to have big recruiting numbers or big gross numbers, right? So um, it's, it's your level of mastery of the system and every team leader has a different, you know, level of mastery on, on these different components. So are you clear on your value propositions, right? Without overselling them, do you know, you know, what the, the benefits are and the prescriptions that we have that would fit the needs after you do the needs analysis? you know, um, with a candidate, you know, are you, are you a master at closing and handling objections? Um, how about, you know, just the biggest challenge that we have is schedule management. How are you at, at sticking to your schedule and allocating the time to work on that, that 20%, right? How do, how well do you do at lead follow-up? How good are you at transitioning them over once they say yes, and then wowing them with a great orientation system? So these are all key components to recruiting system. And then lastly, you know, how good are you at leveraging the hires that you're bringing over and turning them into multiple hires like agents do with listings and turning them into multiple transactions? So in Rockstar Recruiting, these are the things that we dive into deep to help you master, you know, the, the recruiting system. Jessica, you want to talk a little bit about this? Yeah, so let's start it off with a little quiz. And this is for you to do for yourself real quickly. And I want you to do just look at these different lead sources that you guys have so we can identify for you as individuals what you're taking advantage of, what you're winning with, and where you may have opportunity. Uh, most of us focus on just a few lead sources, and yet there are so many sources of leads. And this is not a one man game or one woman game. This is you and your team. So one of the things I would have wished I would have figured out sooner was this isn't just me as team leader. These are all these different lead sources. How are we capitalizing on all of them? 
because that's how this gets easy. You don't need to do everything on your own and you need different types of funnels for leads to come through. So when you hear of agents, or I'm sorry, team leaders that are hiring 20, 30, even sometimes 50 a month, those are sometimes roll-ins, but often that those become those mega offices that have like six or eight lead funnels that they're really rocking. So just for a moment, just look at these 17 different sources and give yourself a, a score on a scale of one to 10. How are you capitalizing on it? You know, is this a steady lead source for you or is it an untapped opportunity? And, you know, this would be a great exercise for you guys to do on a Monday when you're focusing in your huddles on appointments to just say, hey, gang, what could we implement that we're not? Or who could take on one of these uh, different lead funnels that we're just not tapping into? You know, because really that's such a great opportunity for everyone around you to, to tap into profit share as well. So just for, you know, take this a screenshot if you want, or we'll, we'll put this in the chat or we'll follow up with this, whatever you guys need. But I would love you to do this exercise because again, you know, if you're really great at one thing, like I was really great at referrals um, and networking. Well, that doesn't mean that I shouldn't prospect. And frankly, um, I hired an ISA, Zeke, with Cyber Back. He was, he's my cyber recruiter. He was my other half, um, and he set up as many appointments as I did, uh, but we didn't just ignore the lead source just because it wasn't something I was real focused on. Um, we focused on every lead source, and we assigned someone to own it so that we could have 100 appointments set in a, in a month. It wasn't just a one-man gang. So I'm curious on a on a scale of opportunity with 170, you know, how are you guys ranking and what what could you capitalize on? I love it, Marilyn. You're at 38. I love it. So see, you got lots of opportunity, right? Yeah. And um, you know, it's not about perfection, guys. It's about progress and just getting better and better and better at capitalizing these things month over month. So just yeah. figure out where you're at and then figure out where your opportunities lie. Yeah, just you know, like she said, take. Take one of these and work with your team on perfecting it in the next 30 days. And then next month, take another one. This is really, if you're going to write something down, write down the accumulation effect. The accumulation effect is having multiple recruiting strategies that are working simultaneously to get you massive results, right? So like Jessica said, it's not just one thing. It's not just two things. It's having all a lot of these things working simultaneously or all of these things working simultaneously that are creating massive results. And like she said, people that are recruiting double digits and, and you know, 30, 40 people a month, they're, they're, it's not just one thing, right? It's they have 10 of these things that are working like clockwork, okay? All right, so let's talk about some of the key disruptive recruiting strategies and the KDB initiatives that they've been talking about and you're gonna hear more about on the calls like they were touched on on Monday. Um, so heat seeker. Right. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, of, of talk on heat seeker. And I know that there's, you know, people that are killing it with it. And there's other people that are struggling with it. So, Jessica, you know, do you want to do you want to comment on that? I know that you're on a lot of those national calls with heat seeker. Yeah. You know, here's the thing. Any one of us have different strengths or abilities. So uh, don't judge what, you know, your outcome is after a week or so of just trying this. Listen in and hear what others are doing and try different things. You know, because you're hearing, if you listen to the, the national calls, if you get on the weekly calls, very different approaches from very different personalities having killer results. So I think it's like anything, guys. If if you're a real face-to-face -face or, or per people person, you're going to have a better approach one way over someone that is, um, you know, has a different strength. So each one of these initiatives is an amazing advantage that you've been given by Keller Williams. And so think about how you are going to use each of these. Um, you know, I have people winning with text messages. I have people winning with direct calls with direct asks. Um, it's kind of like whatever you're willing to do is probably going to work for you because it also has to do with the other person on the other end of the, the phone or the, the text. And Heat Seeker, um, if you go into your team leader, uh, magic folder that has everything, your Google Drive that Jen Lewis has put together. She has a heat seeker folder that actually documents four very, very different approaches from a call to a very direct text mover that are all working. So what I'd ask you is, are you utilizing any of that? Are you trying any of that? If not, 
it's just a huge opportunity. And if you had a bad week with Heatseeker, try it again because they've dialed it in more and it, it's a, it's winning across the country. So if, if you have any limiting beliefs about that, revisit this because um, that is probably the number one opportunity you all have. I call it the expired list. It's kind of like an expired listing list. You need to treat it as such with high urgency. If your list comes in Monday morning or Tuesday morning or Tuesday afternoon, that should be your prospecting for the rest of the day until you get through that list, just like you would treat expired listings. So yeah. it's your expired agent list, right? Yeah, and, and in fact, uh, Nick, who was featured on our on the national call on Monday, he's he's a client that I coach, and um, and he was working the heat seeker lists, you know, since the beginning, and all of a sudden now he had the breakthrough of six appointments, you know, and in, in, in literally a week. So it wasn't like that at the beginning. Right. It's about like anything, like Jessica saying, it's about getting the relationship with the people, nurturing the people, um, just like you would do with any list. The heat seeker is just a targeted list that of people that are more likely to to do something. So you can't have the expectation that everybody on this list is ready to move and they should be meeting with me. And if they don't, then it doesn't then it's you know, it doesn't work. Right. You can't have that mindset. It's it's a it's a, it's a list that's a, a target list of more motivated people that you need to get in a relationship and nurture, right? Can't just call them up and say, hey, I saw you're on a list. You want to move? And they say no. And they say, oh, this sucks, right? That doesn't work that way, right? So right. <laughs> understand what it is, right? What about It's people? an unfair advantage, though. Let's be honest. Can you imagine yeah. having this heat seeker list a couple of years ago? Right. And the market's helping you guys. The market's creating this list. So, so just remember, these are all initiatives. They're not all equal. They're going to attract different type of people because K-score is totally top of funnel. So that's more of a system that should be run within your office, not by you as team leader. This should be a system that's handed off that you don't even have a hand on in any way, but is a giant opportunity for top of funnel, whereas Indies as team leaders should be a primary focus of yours. Um, I've got a lot of wins happening with Indies that from eight team leaders I've never had any of these kind of, kind of conversations before. And so if you need help here, raise a hand because this is a, a great opportunity for you. I recently had a client get four or five Indie conversations going just because they have such a cool PC. Their PC coach uh, like is so popular that, you know, that's attracting Indies to talk to that office because they're struggling to get their agents into productivity. It's a struggle for them to, to have these agents that aren't doing anything and they don't know what to do about it. You know, they don't have Ignite to plug into. They don't have a class to send them to because guess what? They're the trainer, they're the MCA, they're the recruiter, they're the listing agent, they're everyone, and they're the person typically writing the bills. So stressing out big time about production is a is a, a problem for indies right now. So just think about it. How are you even talking to indies or approaching them? So lots of great opportunity there. Yeah. And the case score, like she said, top of the funnel, meaning that, you know, just because we have free licensing school, we have, you know, K prep and all those cool things. If, if, if you don't have somebody following up and running that system, it's not going to work just like anything. So, you know, not you, but somebody needs to be monitoring that. We have our cyber backer runs that and there's nurturing and there's follow-up and there's marketing and there's all those things that happen, you know, during that case score process. So that at the bottom of the funnel, we're in relationship with those people, or at least my cyber backer is, so then they can pass them to whoever's going to do that interview and, and sign them up and get them to their career night or whatever that may be. So understand that all of this stuff only works if you have a system around it and there's follow-up and nurturing involved. Community. And I would challenge you because, yeah, I would challenge you that if you were to do one of these well, it's heat seeker. Um, so just get deep on one of them before you get deep on all, trying to get all of them going. Um, and K score is something that some, somebody else should, should should own and grab from you. Um, but again, these are unfair advantages that Keller Williams International has put together for us. It's crazy for us not to utilize them. And so if you don't have something actually dialed in here, reach out, talk to your coach. Let's get something going. Yep. And communities are the last one that we have here. Um, this is this is a, a real opportunity for you. In my one of my offices, for example, we do um, commercial classes every month, you know, and, and so that's a community. And, um, and we have a lot of people that show up to the, those classes, including outside agents. 
So there's a lot of opportunity with communities um, to, to turn that into recruiting, uh, as well as, you know, just in your own office for retention and, and creating momentum, whether it's luxury, whether it's military, whatever that may be. KYP, we, we have a lot of people, young professionals that are, are involved in that as well. And we get a lot of mileage out of that, but even outside of our office, because we're the only company that has that young professional thing going on. Well, that's what I was going to say, is you think about how lonely it is at 80% of the offices around you right now that are non franchise, they don't have big infrastructures, big training calendars, big systems. They're usually an office with three, four agents only. It's pretty lonely out there. So you manage, you you, you know, don't take it, don't forget what you can take advantage of. Yeah. We do have six really good disruptors that we're going to share next, but don't forget these great initiatives that you have. Yep. And then you can see there on the right hand side, uh, Jessica and I are doing a class in two weeks over for family reunion, um, technical recruiting with the heat seeker, free class, pop-up class, Go ahead and get that QR code. Um, you may already have it. We've sent this out and we're going to send it out again. But we're going to go through how to recruit with the heat seeker and, and spend you know about 30 minutes going a deep, deep dive on it with you, pulling up the program online so you can see what it looks like, how to use it, what are some of the hacks and so forth. That's on the 22nd. Okay, so disruption number one. Rich. You're, you're good at mofers. You're, I love your mofers. Here are just a few that I came up with um, that I, I thought were good, but I'm curious of any good mofer stories you have. But here's the challenge. Being disruptive okay. is not doing what you're doing now more. It's, ten, it's the 10X. So if, for those of you that are reading 10X is, is easier than 2X, it's true. It actually is. If you want to be disruptive, though, you can't do what you're doing now and just do it more. You've got to do something different and extreme. So here are six ideas we have for you. One is give every agent in your recruitable footprint an offer this week. Everyone. And I just brain dumped a few that I just could come up with off the top of my head that could be conversation starters or texts or a video text message. Um, and it would, I, I love starting with how open-minded would you be? Because that is a great opening. A lot of people have a hard time saying they're not open-minded, right? So how open-minded would you be to connecting about opportunities in real estate? Um, that would be a great one for Heat Seeker, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. how open-minded would you be to review our 2024 agent offering? What the heck is that? It's get a conversation start, right? How open-minded would you be to talk about a position I'm hiring for or teams that are hiring? So those are just a few that I just popped out of my head that you could you could use right now, but it's getting a conversation, making an offer for immediate response. You're asking a question, you're getting a yes or a no, you know, it, that's what a mofer is. And with the movement going on in the market, it's insane not to just be giving offers out because if someone's interviewing elsewhere or moving somewhere else, they might as well go check out what you have as well, right? Yeah, this well, is the time people are thinking about change right now. We're seeing a lot of movement. And, and to, to the MOFR you know, part that you're talking about, remember, you know, we have a lot of great things about creating curiosity, like she's talking about by asking the question. You know, um, are you, are you, um, you know, making money in real estate with social media? Right. Um, how are you using AI to, to do more transactions? You know, questions like that. And what do we have an AI playbook? We have a social media playbook, you know, database. Right. Um, um, are, are, are you um, you know, I mean, when, when you think about the database, look at look at the fact that um, agents with over 201 uh, people in their database are making one hundred nineteen thousand five hundred dollars in real estate. Right. Are you making six figures from your database? You know, that that's a mofer. Um, you know, so what what things can you create curiosity with to to get somebody an immediate response, whether it's a text message to say, yes, I'm interested in that. I mean, look at the MREA playbook, right? It's 165 pages of the best strategies from the top agents in real estate from 2023. It's not like it's 10 years old. It's like from a few months ago, right? That right. we all have. Everybody wants that, but do they know it exists? Right. I, I see. No. I see. I have a, a typo. Sorry. Leverage your ace. Well, that would be your ALC. <laughs> you know, your ace. Those are your aces, right? So level leverage the, your relationships with your ALC. Ask them to think of who they wished would have come to family reunion. Who are their buddies? And get them to get their butts in chairs at your best of panel or 
team meeting or whatever you're doing, because we all do it, have them promise, offer VIP, do something cool, but get them to attend that. Because I know a lot of you tried to get a bunch of people to go to family reunion and you talked to a lot of people and you invited a lot of people and you leaned on your ALC to get guests. Well, most of them aren't coming. So this is where you go back to that whole group again for those that aren't coming and you ask them to make that commitment and use your leverage, the relationships of your ALC to get them to bring them there. A great idea is also to have your ALC meet them for coffee or something before the event so they're likely to bring them into your office with comfort. So don't give up on them if they didn't say yes to family reunion, in other words. Yeah, you know, you've have got your agents bring a guest. Have your agents yeah. you know, bring a guest, even if it's not on your list, if it's a qualified capper. You know, I mean, how hard is it for them to say, hey, I'm going to Las Vegas and Tony Robbins and there's going to be 15,000 of the top agents in the world. I've got a room, you know, uh, would you like to be my guest? I mean, honestly, it could be that simple. Yeah. And, and yet there's so many people that di aren't saying yes, that we could still get back into the room. This is another uh, strategy and this is a, a using vendors and, you know, call the relationships you have in the whole real estate world because there's vendors everywhere and ask them to connect you with any agents that they know that are struggling. Um, tell them you'll offer them some free coaching and, and connect them to opportunities. The thing is, your lenders know who's not giving them deals that used to be. Your favorite title people know who's been whining and complaining. They know what's going on and they have a different Rolodex than you do. So ask them to connect you. And, you know, they're going to feel good about connecting their friend in the business to you that knowing that you're willing to help them. That is a huge opportunity that you have. They also can give you any intel that they may be picking up about changes that offices are having, um, not only to their economic model, but even if they're closing locations or making even grander changes. Yeah, excellent. And then having your top 20%, not just your ALC, your top 20%, take a look at your, your hit list of people that you're going after and the, the Indies, the Megas, the Cappers, and see who they know. Right. And, and have them highlight, you know, the people and put their name next to the people they know. So you can have a conversation with your agent about those people and the best, you know, angle of entry to, to engage in a conversation. Right. Or, or having them help you get, a, get an appointment. Right. You were great at this, Jessica. Well, I'll tell you, I've got a couple of people really winning by just having the screen up on Heat Seeker when they have coaching sessions. And they're like, hey, come over here and look at this list. And who do you know on the list? Because these agents are all tagged likely, likely, likely to, to be shopping around right now. Who can you connect me with? Same thing with the Indies. So use that. I mean, your agents want to help you. So again, while you're at family reunion, post three plus times a day of your experience. Show uh, the world what's going on and the event you're at. You know, even though you've got people that aren't there, locally, your own agents and um, agents that you want are gonna see your stuff online. So use this recruiting TV show that you have for several days um, to, to really see what they're missing out on and make a point to get all your social media photos that you need. You've got so many photo ops there with the Buffalo, with the you know Gary Keller backdrop, you got all kinds of fun things. Make sure you're utilizing it so that you can use this in, for not only during the event, um, but after as well. And then I would encourage you to get everyone that's going with you to do the same, um, not only to promote that they're getting educated on their business and, and furthering their career, but show off what they're up to and, you know, strategize with a common hashtag and utilize this really to its fullest. Think of what Ken Posick does. Well, Ken Posick is what we should be doing. We need to be broadcasting what we're doing so that all the people we're not getting in front of still see what we're up to. And you've got that opportunity with social channels. Yep, use a video, walk through the exhibit hall where all the noise is and all the stuff and, and the energy and, and do some Facebook Live or do some videos clips and, and you know take advantage of that stuff because again, that's free. But how many of your agents are sitting, you know, your recruits are sitting back at home wherever you're at, right? Uh, bad weather, you know, um, an office that's dead, <clears throat> no business, and then they're seeing all this, these agents excited and people on a stage and Gary Keller and Tony Robbins and all these people and they're like, you know, what am I missing out on, right? And then, and then now to the, to the next point, let's set a one-on-one, -on -one. let's have a conversation with these people, 
right? When we when we get back, I want to share with you what, what I got from this incredible event with 15,000 of the top agents in the world sharing strategies and tactics. Who doesn't want to hear that? Especially if they saw your social media around it so they can see what they, you know, that they missed something that makes it an easier phone call. Yeah, and if you do set the one-on-ones with everyone in your pipeline for when you get back so you can share the latest and greatest intel, you're also going to get a reality check on the health of your pipeline. Um, if I have 50 people in my pipeline and only two people will set an appointment with me, that tells me I need to be given that pipeline a lot more attention and a lot more love. If I'm able to get 10 appointments from maybe a pipeline of 50, I'm probably staying in touch enough to keep things warmed up. So that's a good gauge for you guys to feel out how you're doing. And Rich and I just released this week, the 2024 Recruiting Nurture Smart Plan. I'm gonna tell you, you guys gotta go check it out, save it first to your library, and then add to your own contact record, a custom tag, a new one. The custom tag should say 2024 Nurture. Now, the reason why I'm telling you to do this is because the, the new smart plans do some new cool things. If you add that tag moving forward to anyone, they'll be automatically put on that smart plan. So as you're working and utilizing command, you'll be able to just tag people 2024 nurture and they'll go right on that smart plan for you. It's a killer smart plan, but it will keep you remembering who you need to call so that you don't let things cool down with your own pipeline. So action items, what are we gonna ask them to do? These are the actions we want you to take to be disruptive. Yep. So number one is to activate your lead generation sources that we talked about at the beginning of the call where you rate yourself and um and, and let's get those activated, right? And see who can help you with your team. Set massive recruiting appointments, right? How do you get to 100 appointments in a month, Jessica? I mean, you talked about it, right? You didn't yeah. used to do it. Well, and I'll tell you, KW Vietnam did it this last uh this last couple months ago. And what they did is they have they have about a hundred agents total. And, you know, so that's a really big goal to get 100 appointments. They didn't get 100 appointments, so they set 100 appointments. And so they gave the initiative to their whole team to have everyone help set one appointment. How simple, but how awesome and disruptive. So again, if you want different results, you guys got to think 10x, not 2x. And I hope, you know, you take action on at least one of these things. Yeah. And then again, like we talked about, mobilize your ALC or top 20%. Um, to, to help you with identifying the pipeline at family reunion and be disruptive. Run a recruiting contest. This is a great time to run a recruiting contest. And it doesn't have to be hires. It could be like she talked about, appointments, right? It, it, you know, just have something that, and you gamify it. Um, have prizes. You know, you could tie it into a productivity contest as well. And, um, and just do something to get people into action, right? And then leverage family reunion, as we talked about. And then we've got our Rockstar Recruiting program that starts uh, in March, right after family reunion. And, you know, take advantage of that. It starts March 14th. It's a phenomenal program where you're going to, we're going to be doing a deep dive over three months every single week um, where we're going to be talking about 12 sessions of, of all of these things at a, at a very deep level from needs analysis to how to get appointments, what to say to lead follow-up, handling objections, uh, hacks, broker metric hacks, uh, the things that we're talking about with Heat Seeker, um, how to go after indies. I mean, we do a deep dive in a lot of these things. So check that out if that's something that you're interested in. Are there any questions in the chat, Jessica, before we wrap up? So the SMART plan is called 2024 Recruiting Nurture. And if you just search my name, it pops up. And Rich and I run the Recruiting Collective that's um, our gift for our members this month. So you all get the gift. There you go for being on this call. All right. Well, if nothing else, we'll see you in Las Vegas. And um, let us know if we can help and support you in any way, especially if it has to do with recruiting everybody. Thanks for being here. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.